Jesus Church. Thank you for joining us for another amazing service. Hello, friends. Hello, hello. I hope you guys are doing well. I had, I hope that you have had a fantastic week. Um, this is your boy Raps, um, or oh, Rappeling, or oh, Rappeling, aka Raps, which is which. Okay, you, what, which, which, whichever one works out for you. Um, listen, guys, I am your friend. All right. Um, yeah, man, I've missed you guys for a very long time. It's been a minute. Um, and listen. God is good. Right there on the chats. God is good all the time. The Lord is good. Um, super excited. We've just moved in our new venue in Pretoria North 477 Gerrit Marez. Um, and listen, God has been just doing some great works in our new venue. We're still, you know, planning and putting some some ideas into execution and God, listen, it's been super, 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 super. Um, wonderful and listen we don't want you to miss out we want you to come through pull through let's continue uh, giving to us the love of the church let's not go grow weary in doing good hallelujah so I'm here to introduce our new theme for the for the month um, and then afterwards we're going right into the time of worship um, and then I'll come back um, to introduce the speaker of the day and yeah man um we are in a new summer series deeper worship what does worship mean to you right there right there on our comment section let us know what does worship mean to you how does it look like for you we'd love to know that thank you to every person who's um who's been serving to in the life of the church kumo was behind the sound listen guys behind the sound desk he's doing the, the work right there behind the sound he's making sure that my mic is good you know he's balancing me right there um so thank you very much to you brother god bless you man yeah you know what i'm saying yeah so right friends we're going into the time of of, uh, of the word please grab out your note pad grab out your bibles um we're going right into it our lead friend is going to lead us in right he's going to preach to us to us he's going to preach the word of God to us and please grab out your notepad your Bible and let's be excited let's be expectant of the Word of God and what God is yet to say to us in this time and season I love you guys remember this don't forget this I'm your friend and I love you cheers hello friends what an amazing time to be alive God is doing something great in the life of our church and it's super exciting I am privileged to be standing right now in our new venue our pretoria north campus and it's all because of god's grace and his goodness now i want to share with you that two years ago two years ago literally in july we started our online services and we preached a sermon the first service that we had i preached a sermon on build your church now i think this is a beautiful time to actually go back and just really see where the Lord has brought us from and what the Lord has been doing in the life of our church. I think this day marks something very precious in the life of our church, that God is doing something new. Now, I want you to sit back and really, really take in the prophetic message that was preached two years ago and really see what God is doing today because everything that God says, He surely says it through. There is no word that He answers that comes back to Him void. It accomplishes everything He sends it to do. And it's very powerful to be able to see the word of God in action right here in Pretoria North. God is building his church and I'm super excited about it. Now, wherever you're watching from, you can be a part of what God is doing. Continue liking, continue subscribing, continue joining us online. And before you know it, Jesus Church is coming to your city. God bless you. Enjoy the message. Well, this is the day that we've all been waiting for with great excitement, anticipation, the official launch of Jesus Church. And we're so excited that you got to be a part of this wonderful experience that you've tuned in, watching online on Facebook and on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us. Let us know where you are watching from. You can just put that in the chat below. You can like, you can comment, you can share this so that many people will see it. In fact, if you're watching on Facebook, as we said earlier on, 
create a watch party so that your friends and family can be a part of what God is doing right here and now. I know that if we were in a building, you would be giving me an amen, you'll be screaming, you'll be super excited about what's happening. But we are meeting online and as much as we cannot engage physically, but let us use the platform to engage with one another. Let me know that you're here. Let me know that you're excited. Let me hear the sound of anticipation and expectation of what God is about to do so let's put some flames up in there let's put some excitement in there let's put some hallelujahs let's put some glory to God let us just let us be in church online and I'm super excited because God is doing something new Jesus Church is not just another church in fact we don't want to settle for the status quo we don't want to just be uh, average Christians or just have another service or preach another sermon no we are believing God for transformation we are believing God for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon all flesh that the gifts of the Spirit will come alive in the church we'll hear people prophesying and uh, evangelism are being awakened and the apostles and the pastors and people just being called out to their gifting the signs of the miraculous and wonders to to see all of this happening in the life of the church to see people being healed deaf ears ears blind eyes to see those who can't walk to walk we are believing god for the power of the holy spirit not only do we want to see the gifts active but we want to see the fruit of the spirit happen in the life of our church we want to see people loving one another being kind having the the self-control of the Holy Spirit, having the spirit of joy and peace. We want to see that in the life of our church. And we are committed to go out into the world and make disciples, what we call making friends. That is the Great Commission and that is our mission statement, to make friends because we believe that we are called to go to every corner and to preach the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, which is our vision, knowing Jesus. We want to make friends, make disciples of people who are going to have a relationship with God, not to just um, put up their hand in an altar call, but to have a deliberate and conscious practical day in day out relationship with their savior jesus christ because this is eternal life that they may know thee the only true god and jesus christ whom thou has sent and that's why we are jesus church because we are committed to preach the gospel of jesus christ and to lift up the name of jesus because there is no other name given amongst men whereby they shall be saved except for the name of Jesus so we will not lift up every other name we will not preach about any other thing or talk about anything we just want to talk about Jesus you will only hear us talking about Jesus because that's what we have been called to do so exalt his name make Jesus famous in every street in every corner wherever we go we want to make Jesus famous and we believe that under this banner Jesus says if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men unto me and that's what we believe right now that as we lift up the name of Jesus as Jesus church he will begin to draw people from different walks of life from different tribes different ethnicities different languages different nationalities all coming Coming together in unity and in harmony under this banner of the name of Jesus that's who we are that's what we're all about and that's what we committed to do and that we are willing to die for that is a cause we are willing to die for because we know if it's not worth dying for it's not worth living for so whatever it takes we are going to preach the gospel the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ we're not waiting for an answer to come from our government to come from um, any political leaders or any businesses or anybody in corporate, wherever, we know that Jesus is the answer. COVID or not, no COVID, unrest or no unrest, violence or no vi violence, employment or unemployment, whatever the economy says or whatever the landscape and the social states of our country is, Jesus is the answer. And we believe that, we are convicted by that, and we are going out into the world to preach that, that Jesus is the answer. He is the solution. And I'm so glad that you get to be a part of this. I'm so glad that I'm alive to witness what God is doing right now. And this is just the beginning. You know, we're so unconventional. We are launching a church in the midst of a pandemic without a physical building, launching it online, right? 
And as crazy as it sounds, it is happening and it's only the beginning. And we know that eventually we're gonna grow. We still need to buy more cameras. We need to buy a sound equipment, instrument for our worship team. And we wanna build church buildings so that we can come and physically gather all over the country in every corner we want, we want you to be able to find Jesus Church. And not only in the country, but potentially across the world so that people can come in and gather and be equipped and be set up into flames so they can go out into the world and be the difference and be the light into a dark world and be the salt into a saltless and tasteless world. That is our mission and that's what your giving is going towards too because we are committed to this cause and we know that along the way we will make a lot of friends. We know that along the way a lot of people are going to be convicted by this vision and say hey this is what I'm about, this is what I'll be a part of, I'm committed to that. You can let us know, you can join our social media platforms, we've created a Facebook group, you can be a part of uh, Jesus Church Friends and we can really just rally together and come in together not to do any other thing guys but except to preach the knowledge of Jesus Christ. As simple as it sounds, it is very, very powerful. We believe that the name of Jesus is the most powerful thing that God has given us as human beings right here on planet Earth. We are not alone. He's right here with us. Well, let's get right into it. Let's get into the Word of God. Our theme for the month is build your church. And we believe that Jesus is building his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, very simple, the book of Matthew chapter 16, Jesus talks about this. In fact, it reminds me of a story when I was younger. My dad worked very, very hard. In fact, he wanted us to have the best life he could potentially give us with what he could afford at the time. And at some point, that meant extending our home. My dad had four boys. You can imagine how crazy and rowdy it was in the house. So he decided once upon a time that he is going to extend our house. More especially for my mom, because my mom needed a bigger bedroom. But hey, we all, we all got, you know, the benefits of that. However, my dad didn't get the right person to do the job. He didn't find quite the right guy to do the job. So, in fact, my friend's parents once used this guy and they had a horrible experience. But we only heard about that after the fact. I remember one particular day it was raining and somehow I remember one of the walls in the house was actually skew which this guy had done and somehow the rain found itself into our bedroom and eventually was making it into the passage of the house so my brother and I had to roll up our jeans and get buckets and start pouring the water outside of the house so that we don't drown literally inside our house and and, and my dad didn't do anything wrong he paid for it he bought the material the problem wasn't him or anything that he done the problem is the person who was doing the building. How many of you guys know that a building is only as good or only as strong as the quality of its builder? If you find a good builder, you will get a good building. And my question to you today, write this down in the chat, who is building your life? Who is building your life? Matthew chapter number 16, as I've told you, Jesus comes to his disciple, he says, who do men say I am? And then, some say that they responded and say, some say you are Jeremiah, Elijah, one of the prophets. Then he asked them, but who do you say I am? And Peter replied, he says, you are the Messiah. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replied in verse number 17, you are favored and privileged Simon of Jonah. For you did not discover this of your own, but my father in heaven had revealed this to you. Then he says, look at this. Then he says, I give you the name Peter, which means a stone. Then he says, and upon this rock will be the bedrock of the foundation of the church, which I will build my legislative assembly and the power of death or the gates of hell will not prevail against it, will not be able to overpower it. He says, upon this rock, what is the rock? It was the confession that Peter had made, the revelation of who Jesus is, which is the Messiah, the Christ, the son of the living God. He says, I will build my church upon who I am. I find this part of the scripture to be very amazing because that means that the church is being built upon him and it's being built by him, right? Think about that. Upon this rock, I will build my church. So Jesus is building the church upon himself. 
Now, now let's take a step back. Who is the church? We know the church is not the building. That's why we can have church online because the church is you and I. So what he's essentially saying is that he says, I will build your life, right? He says, I will build your life upon me. So you are built on him and you are built by him. It matters who builds your life. Now think about this statement again. The building is only as good as its builder. Now, if you are being built by God, on God, why then would you be afraid? Think about this. Just take a moment and think about it. Whether the rains come or the storms come or the floods come, or even the earthquake comes, you will not be shaken because you are built on him and you are built by him. Not only is the builder important, it also matters the material you use for the building. In fact, I found this quite interesting that if you use the incorrect quantities when mixing cement, the batch will come out incorrectly. And in fact, it will make a poor batch. Unfortunately, some suppliers will try and cut their production costs in order to make a bigger profit. So they will use cheap materials and poor workmanship when producing their concrete. For example, China's tallest building, the Ping An Finance Center, caused a lot of controversy in 2013 when it was deemed unsafe to work on or to work in due to poor concrete that had been mixed with beach sand. Now, because they gave the builder poor material, the building became poor quality, right? The building, quality is as good as the material that is used to build it. So you can have a good builder whose name is Jesus, but it also matters what you give him to build your life. We've established that Jesus is the one who builds your life. As a Christian, if Jesus is the one building your life, then that's great. You cannot be afraid. But not only should it end there, it also matters what you give him to build your life worth. In fact, if you want to get good material, it is expensive. It's going to cost you something to get high quality material, but you need to get high quality material in order to be a high quality building so that when storms come, when rain comes, when uncertainty comes, when sickness and diseases come, when the economy is not going well, you will be able to stand because you are being built on him. You are being built by him and you are being built by good quality material. What is the cost? of quality material? Are you paying the cost of quality material? Are you giving the builder quality material? Luke 14, 28, the Passion Translation version says, so don't follow me without considering what it will cost you. Don't follow me without considering what material, what parts of your life are you willing to give me? It's either you give me all Oh, you give me nothing. Jesus is building his church, but it matters, dear brothers and sisters, what we give him to build with. He is building your life. He has a plan to prosper you. He has a plan to bless you. And we know that his promises are true and yes and amen, but it matters what we give him to work with. He can only use what we give him. For who would construct a house before sitting down to estimate what cost it would take to complete it. Otherwise, he may lay a foundation and not be able to finish it. The neighbors will ridicule him, saying, look at him, he started to build, but couldn't complete it. Likewise, unless you surrender all to me, giving up all you possess, you cannot be one of my disciples. It matters what we give him. Are we giving God everything or are we keeping some part many of us expect god to bless parts of our life that we haven't handed over to him god can only use what you give him he wants to build your life but he can only build what you give him he can only use what you give him if you remember the story where jesus was in 
the midst of the crowd and they were hungry and there was a child with two fish and five loaves and for him to be able to bless it the two fish and the loaf had to be handed over to him so that he could bless it it was not blessed in the hands of the, the child it was not blessed in the hands of the disciples it was blessed when it when it came into the hands of Jesus and I want to say to you that there's parts of your life that you have kept for yourself and that's why you haven't seen the blessing of the Lord upon it and I want to encourage you God wants to build your life so give him every part of your life don't just don't just give him your finances and not give him your career don't just give him your kids and not give him your marriage don't just give him your your health and not give him your business give him everything God wants everything that you are every department every compartment of your being he wants to be able to build every part of the bedroom of the house he wants to build the kitchen he wants to build the dining room he wants to build the bathroom give him the material so that he can build your life i want to encourage you to begin to put down in the chat to write down the things that you want to surrender to Jesus. It may be your kids, your parenting. It may be your marriage with your spouse. It may be your career. You're believing God for a job or you believe in God for a promotion. Just write it down and say, Lord, I've maybe I've held this back and I want to give it to you so that you can build my life and that you can bless it. Whatever it is, it can be your finances, your social life, your friends, family, you've got cousins, maybe an area of your life that has not been forgiving. I'm going to give that to him. Whatever it is right now, just put it down in the chat and I'm going to pray with you that we're going to give it up right now. Just give it up to Jesus. And I believe that as we give it up, we'll give God better material to build our life because Jesus is building his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Lord Jesus, I pray for every sacrifice that is being laid down to the cost of building our lives right now in Jesus' name. Those who are laying down their studies, those who are laying down their relationships, those who are laying down their finances, their careers, their kids, their friends, family, all the things in their lives that they hadn't handed over to you. Right now, Lord Jesus, they bring them to you and I pray that you use that to build their lives. Work in them, bless them, in Jesus' name, I pray that they'll come out stronger and better and purer than gold at the end of all of this. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I believe God that right now he's working in those parts of your life that you've handed over to him. That God is beginning to build them up. That God is building, beginning to shape them up because we hand it over to him so that he can bless it. And when he blesses it, it multiplies. And I'm so excited for the testimonies that are about to come based on what we have presented to God today in his throne. Now, practically, I don't know what it looks like for you after this. May mean adding another 15 minutes to your prayer life. Or maybe praying intentionally with your kids or with your spouse. Intentionally praying when you get to work or giving or tithing from your company account. Whatever it is, you need to do it. Serving in your community, finding a social initiative that you can be part of, or heeding that call that God has been calling you to go into missions. Whatever it is, you know exactly what is required. You know the cost of what it takes for you to be able to give that to God so that he can use it to build your life. Whatever you give to him is not lost, by the way. You are not worth what you have. You are worth what you give away. The world calculates wealth based on what's in the bank and in assets. But the kingdom of heaven calculates worth, wealth, based on what they give away to those who are poor, to those who are struggling, and to make a difference in other people's lives. So God bless you. Thank you so much for being a part of this amazing experience, this very first service for Jesus Church. Thank you so much, friends, that you came together to enjoy the word, to enjoy the worship, and just to be blessed under his presence, to be a part of this revolutionary, thing that is happening across the world right now, the move of the Holy Spirit. We are the move of God. I believe that we're not waiting for the move of God. We are the move of God. I believe that revival is here and we are 
the hands and feet of Jesus, going out into the world, bringing peace, harmony, freedom, tranquility, and joy. I believe that God is using us to be the revival in people's lives, that he's using us to touch many who have been suffering with anxiety and pain and poverty. I believe that we are the solution bringers, that we are the army that God is raising up to change the trajectory of people's lives. So God bless you. And I just want to encourage you, if you haven't, subscribe, like, share, comment, whatever it is that you need to do in order to engage with the life of our church. We'll also let you know on our social media what the life of the church looks like in the week and so forth. So make sure that you you just tune in on our social media. Make sure you be a part of our Facebook group. That's where we'll put more announcements more regularly and we can chat and engage with you during the week. And we can tell you how you can become a friend of Jesus Church and how you can actually be a part of what God is doing here, regardless of where you are. Space is no limit when it comes to online stuff. So that's the amazing thing. So I'm so glad that you can definitely be a part of what God is doing. You can serve. You can definitely add something to the value of what God is doing in the life of Jesus Church. I hope you are blessed by this message. I hope you are encouraged and I hope that you are better now than when you were before you watched. So God bless you. Take care and we'll see you guys next week. Same time, same place. Seven o'clock Sunday evening, Facebook and YouTube. So excited for what God is doing. Let's go out into the world. And let's be the difference. We know exactly what we need to do. We've been equipped. The word has been preached. Let's go out there and start acting on it. Jesus is building on your, his church. So don't be afraid. Have that boldness and courage as you walk out there, knowing that Jesus is in control. Should not be afraid. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is in control. Jesus is enough. This is Jesus Church, and we're all about knowing Jesus and making friends. God bless you. Well, thank you very much to our lead friend for the beautiful, wonderful word that he just preached to us. Wasn't that a great word? Um, weren't you blessed by the word that was preached? And, you know, I, I always say this even now in our in-person service that let us not, and I always encourage myself and, and, and the rest of the guys in our in-person service that let us not only be hearers of the word, let the word that was preached, let us be doers of the word. Because um, the Bible says that faith, we did, we did tip of faith in the past month, uh, in, in the month of May. And, and the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing of the word. So, Whatever word that you have received, the word that you have received today, let us not only become the hearers, but as well the doers. It takes faith to act upon the word that you have received. Hallelujah. So, let us not only be hearers, but as well be doers of the word. Well, thank you very much to our lead friend for that wonderful, beautiful word that you have just preached to us. Friends, we're just going right into the time of of offering and it's so it's so encouraging as well right be, before we continue with the offering that we've just moved into a new venue um as the church and we're thankful for what god is for where god took us from to where god has placed us in right now and we are not where we were yesterday but we had a better position and we're not where we want to be but we're getting there um, and it takes work, it takes you and I sowing and giving towards the life of the church and making sure that the kingdom of God grows. Hallelujah. Let us not grow weary in giving and doing good towards the life of the church in building the kingdom of God and making sure that what we're doing now we're not doing for ourselves we're doing for generations to come and i want to leave you with this word this this evening how is your giving where is your heart let's just not let, let us not just make giving just a formality thing but let us also be excited and when we come and give and when we give in the house of the lord 
how is your giving are you giving the best in order for you to receive the best from God if you are God and you are giving and you you were and you were getting that kind of offering that kind of tithe would you be pleased so what I'm saying friends is let us give the best in order for you to receive the best from God the banking details are right there on your screen if you would like to give through our EFT the banking details are showing right there if you'd like to give with our, through our Zepa, Zepa QR code, please don't download the Zepa app so that you can be able to scan the app, the code, sorry, the QR code, and then you'll be able to give to us the love of the church. Let us pray for the, let us pray for the offering and let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give all the glory, give all the honor. Thank you for this time, Lord. Mighty God, so you're about to give into the house of the Lord. We pray for every seed. We cover every seed with the blood of Jesus. That mighty God, Jehovah, we believe that the seed has been planted in a good soil, Lord. We thank you, Lord, Jehovah. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen and amen. Well, friends, thank you very much. For those who have been giving faithfully to us the love of the church, we thank you. And we are praying with you. We are praying for you. And let us not grow weary in giving to us the love of the church. Hallelujah. So, we'll see you next week same time same place please if you know that you're around Gauteng do visit us in our new venue 477 we would love to host you we would love to have you our host team is ready 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 to welcome you we love you I love you my name is Raps and I'm your friend cheers <laughs> <laughs>